Islam. We're not going to waste time today. 653, May 12, 2015. I want to send um, a shout out, send the Islam to all the Moors who sent me the solar return greetings today. I mean, give thanks, appreciate the love. Appreciate the attention. You know, I mean, it's always good to get positive energy from from positive people. You know, I mean, all the calls and the texts and the messages or whatever like that. Islam. Now we got that out the way because you don't. Know, we don't got time for that. Um, just got off watching um, two of the two two of two of the Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation athletes do a, uh, you know, debunking more science or whatever, Islamism, whatever. We're speaking of Sanada McMahon and Imam, quote-unquote, babyface Bashir. First thing that I want to put on the record is that that was the worst live thing that I ever experienced, ever, ever. The worst live stream that I ever saw. BS, unorganized, predictable, a waste of stream time. And Sarnetta should be ashamed of himself to let Bashir go up there and embarrass his house of consciousness, Sarnetter TV, Sarnetter Studios, on them level. He should be embarrassed. You should take that stuff down. Don't even leave it up there. And if you leave it up there, it only proves what we're saying, that y'all are some agents directly working with CIA, FBI, whoever else that's paying you guys to come out here and diss these people's birthright like, this is some game out here. Like, Moors have something to prove to conscious blacks who, I'm going to add, is the, the focus of the class today because the conscious black community, the people who say it doesn't matter what they call themselves and all that, those people are the biggest race traders on the planet. The biggest race traders. When you talk about sellout niggers or whatever like that, don't worry about... Stephen from Django, don't worry about whoever else that you think is a sellout, Barack Obama, whoever. Black leaders, especially the conscious ones, they're the biggest race traders on the planet. Tell them Kudrow said so. And anybody, anybody who's listening to them, supporting them, playing, you know what I mean, calling Canaan land, candy land, and saying that, you know, the fez is a bucket hat and, and stuff like that, all you guys could go suck yourself, right, for a long time. Just continue to suck yourself because all you people that support that nonsense are frauds. All of you are civil litter, more tooths, dead in the eyes of the law. That's why you have licenses. That's why you have all these U.S corporate instruments but you're telling people that you have knowledge of self when you don't even have any goddamn knowledge of self you guys are some goddamn idiots right the biggest sellouts are the conscious ones that don't have a nationality we'll put it on the record all the people who don't have a nationality those are the biggest sellouts especially if they talk negative about nationality as soon as they start talking negative about Mars, already know that they're a sellout they work for somebody. I don't know who, because they're not going to give up who's paying them. But I guarantee they got checked, and they're getting checks in order to keep you away from your birthright and to have you second-guessing whether you should call yourself a more or whether you should not call yourself a more and just, you know, doesn't matter what you call yourself. Anybody talking like that. So make sure, make sure that... Before you put $20 in the hand of those people doing debates, you hear they got Seti going to debate irritated, irritated Genie, another two clowns 
that's going to be debating something that Amor already put on the record. We already told people, Aline Bay already put it on the record. It's on YouTube about where the term nigger come from. It's in print where he actually wrote for a magazine and wrote an article about nigger and where nigger came from. And these two clowns are going to go on, once again, Son Letter McMahon, the setup man, the Don King of conscious whatever, bringing the, bringing the fight together, right? Pacquiao's shoulders not even working, but he's going to go fight and, and get paid, and your shoulders not even working, and people put money down on you, and then you're going to complain about you lost or whatever like that. All these clowns, sellouts, agents, working for the other side, trying to make you think that Moors are working for the other side when Moors already know that that's U.S. democracy. Moors already know and been telling people that U.S. is a corporation. Moors been telling you that the founding fathers that they're trying to say, you know, gave the Moors or whatever, aren't the founding fathers. Those guys are late. All those guys are Masons that were the Moors bitches that we taught all those people who call themselves Masons. All these European women or whatever like that, Dar, you know, um, Planned Parenthood and all that stuff. Why are they doing that? Because the Moors, and they know that the only way that those vampires could feed is if the people stay black. And what are they doing? They're making sure that you guys stay black. They're making sure that their people stay as black as can be so that the vampire could feed. And who the vampire is? The vampire is anybody who says that they're democracy. Forget, you know what I mean? Putting all Europeans in the pot. Islam told the European, Ipsoger, Moorish subjects in the Americas who know what's good, and they're going out there getting their Moorish nationality slash naturalization papers from Moors, proclaiming that they have allegiance with the Moors, denouncing their U.S. citizenship and going out there and exercising at Ipso Jermora subjects. Islam to all those Europeans, you know what I mean? Peace and love, you know what I mean? All the crew, Crack Pit, Latif Bay, all the crew. Islam to all, all those European Moors. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call them Moors because they're doing more. They're doing way more. Some Europeans doing way more to stand up for Moorish birthright than black conscious leaders who want to pretend like Moors aren't legit. Well, you know, this is this is in Candyland. Just so y'all know, this is in Candyland, right? So Candyland, tax exempt, 222-141. And then when you look at the taxes part, you see that there's no tax on here. No tax. All these numbers, no tax. How come? Because these white devils, as you call them, recognize Moors out here. We don't have to hide about nothing. You know what I mean? Here's another one. Just so you know, right? Go to the top. Once again, tax exemption. Kudro, right there, 222-141. Then we follow all the numbers all the way down. The bottom supposed to say tax. No tax. Why? Because Europeans recognize Moors out here. And we're not begging Europeans to recognize us. They recognize because they already know us up. And they know that we're not niggers. So they're not taxing us. There we go. No tax. Tax exempt. 222-141. Once again. Show your nationality card that these people say, hey, nationality card, oh, the Fez doesn't work. You need to prove whatever. We don't have to prove anything, but we're proving, just so you know, that we don't pay tax out here because we're not niggers. We're not black. We're not Negro. We're not colored. We are Moors. We are Moorish American. Whether it's Moorish, whether it's M-U-U-R, M-O-R, M-U-R, M-O-O-R, doesn't matter. We don't pay tax. Because why? The so-called European who owns this store called Bulk Barn welcomes me to come into the store anytime. Doors could be closed or whatever like that. 
bang on the glass, they'll let me go in and go shop because tax exempt, 222141. We're not even explaining what 2221, go study, because we're not, we're done. Over. Over. We're not explaining anything. Right? If you want to know how, oh, wow, you guys get taxes off, whatever, go study. We're just showing and proving, since people say we don't show and prove, so there we go. Taxes, zero taxes. Why? Because we're Moors, and Moors don't pay tax, and we're not begging the European. We're not begging the devil to recognize us or nothing like that, how Imam Bashir and these clowns that these people are listening to are talking. Once again, zero, zero, zero. And the tax out here, GST, PST, HST. That's the tax. Look at it close. Look at it close. Zeros. Zero. Just smudge that in your face like you punks need to get. Secondly, because of that bastard ass stuff that you guys tried to do today, I know that you guys aren't game. I know that you guys aren't game on Art of War because you guys are some sellout Negroes. You have no honor whatsoever. You're traitors to your own people, traitors to your own country, traitors to your own race, traitors to your nationality, traitors to your profit, traitors to your flag, traitors to your language, because y'all claiming that this is language that we speak is some European thing, when he came out of a cave or whatever, and he didn't have anything until he met who? The Moors. Had nothing until he met the Moors. Zero. He had zero. Using fur coat to get fleas off of his body. Thinking the world is flat. Sail and fall off the edge of the earth. Stupid talk. Only stupid, incompetent people talk like that. And you're telling me that, that somebody's following them? We've we got, we got time following, following them. We're following them. When we taught them. Right? Another thing. Y'all hate the goddamn devil so much. All on this thing, all y'all did was quote from the devil. All you did was put up pictures of devils. How come y'all putting up so much pictures of devils? Right? How come y'all putting up so much pictures of devils? Y'all, when I say y'all, I'm talking about San Netter, right? And I'm talking about Imam Bashir trying to play their little slander campaign against the Moors. And then, you know, picking and choosing which Moors you're slandering against. You know, we're not we're not talking about Taj, you know what I mean? Because you know Taj would feed you guys some <laughs> if you go at him, you know, because he's out there and he'll come up there with the camera and give you guys some stuff, even though he already gave it to you and you should know better by now. He y'all had y'all had the one on one with Taj. Y'all had the personal Pe people people who been studying for five, ten years never met Taj, wish they could be in front of the master teacher. And you freaking Negroes, you sellouts, you traders. All you traders down with House of Consciousness or whatever that got your face up on the logo, you better get your name off that stuff because you see how Allah had their stuff not working? Allah had them start 25 minutes late. They got the stream running while they're looking for stuff, searching for stuff, have people waiting there, wasting their time with these idiots. And then all they're going to go on there is go on there and yell and call people nigger and what you can't do that you don't got no status you don't hear nothing that you say only morals could say that you're a nigger you have no status sonnetter you're dead in the eyes of the law dead in the eyes of the law i bet you all those couches stuff that you got in your house bet you bought them from some european and if you got them from some asiatic i bet you that asiatic bought it from some european don't tell me about Moors and support and whatever and when y'all some stateless dead Negroes and you need to take nationality and birthright serious because like I said there's Moors who have been studying for five ten years more science and have not met the master teacher and would love to sit down in front of the elder Tashtarik Bay. 
they would they would give up a limb. They'll actually put their hand on the chopping block to let somebody take their hand if they can even have a one minute conversation with Taj. Forget meet him in person. One minute conversation, just one, just a minute conversation. Just to sit down and have a conversation with the man, with the more, with the elder. They would give up a hand and you conscious blacks, all you Moors, we're telling you, all you Moors who know that you're Moors, that you're down with Saw Netter, talk to your boy. All you Moors who are down with House of Consciousness, Saw Netter Studios and whatever like that, you guys want to play these games with people about your Moors, but you're siding with the traitors, pick a side. Letting y'all know, pick a side. Because after today, you know, everything is going down today because today is the solar return. So once we go, when we start going around the sun again, don't think that, you know what I mean? We already showed y'all. We already, we already supported all those Moors. Sharif Bay, right? He's talking crap about Kudrow and he doesn't know what he's talking about and they don't follow the prophet or whatever. I gave you $100 to your martial arts school. I gave a hundred bucks to your martial arts school. So don't tell me about Kudrow is talking crap or whatever, but then you're going to accept the hundred bucks that I gave you for your martial arts school for them to go to China to go compete. I know. I bought, I bought 12 t-shirts from Red Pill and Blue Pill and all with their Moore's t-shirt campaign or whatever like that. So don't say we don't support Moore's. Right? And I had to pay the $200 duty. Which I wasn't supposed to be paying no $200 duty on some shirts that I only paid $200 for. But, but I had to pay $200 duty because, you know, y'all got $1,000, t-shirts worth $1,000 on the receipt that you're sending the t-shirts to me. T-shirts worth $1,000. So I have to pay $200 duty. I say nothing. It was cool. It was all right, cool, you know, whatever, whatever, but... Time's over now. Ain't no more games. Stop playing games. If you're Moors, get down with the Moors. If you're if you want to play Negro black color, whatever, then stay on the Negro black colored side and do the Negro black color thing. Stop fronting like like you're down with the movement. When everybody just wants accolades from the Moors, go check House of Consciousness. Go check Sarnetter TV. Go check all the videos and see which videos have the most counts. Bet you it's the videos with Taj that have the most counts on Sarnetter stuff. Bet you. Bet you it's the Alim versus Seti debate that has the most views of all the debates that these guys did. Bet you. Just go check. I don't even, I didn't even check. I'm telling you go check. Just to be sure. Just to be sure. Because time is done right now. Active Moors, time to step up. It's coming at y'all too. If you say you're active more, you're down with the movement, better get down with like, you know, do what with some what Supreme else doing. Call, make up something. Make up whatever, start a show, start videotaping, audio recording, and putting stuff online. Do like Rami Salam L and me did, get together with a more, make a book, put it out there. Do something. Because time's over for games right now. These people have their little assault going on, trying to do whatever they want to try to do to the Moors. Right? It's not working, but our people are ignorant. Our people are incompetent jackasses, and they don't know—they don't know anything. I was just sitting on the chat for an hour, just watching the chat stuff, and our people are fools. Negro, black, color people—the most dumb people on the planet. Same thing, Islam to Brother Casanova Bay, cause Brother Casanova Bay did the same thing. Sat back and just watched the chat. And he's so disgusted at our people that he had to take a screenshot of a chat with a European coming to back Kudrow that, hey, you know what? What that Moore's saying right there is actually really what it is. And what you black guys are talking about is some bullshit. And then the Negro is going to come on there. Conscious, mind you, conscious black guy is going to come on and he's going to start talking crap about Moore's, talking crap about Kudrow, talking crap about nationality or whatever. And then, Brother Casanova Bay had to make the thing. More conversation with a European. 
laid it all out. Europeans down with everything. No questions. No freaking debating. No challenging anything, whatever. Down with everything. Conversation with a Negro. Challenging everything. Challenging everything. Questioning something. Dissing something that the Moors do. Time's done now. Moors been shown and proved. Moors been went to jail. Got locked up. Arrested. Dragged on the floor. Strip searched, whatever. Got let go with no charges, no nothing. What more do you want? More walked up to the police car with the camera, filmed the police car. This is this is a Candyland more, Candyland more. Filmed the policeman in the car. He didn't get out, shoot him, get out, do nothing. He sat there like little punk that he is because he knows about Moors out here. We're telling y'all, this is not some slight. We are active out here. And I'm saying we, because it's not just me. Not just because you see Kudro in front of the Ustream, me or Kudro on the YouTube means that, you know, oh, ain't no more is not doing nothing in Canaan land. So Canaan land more, we're talking to y'all too. Step your shit up because it's time to blow the lid off this thing. It's time for the pressure cooker to blow up in these guys' faces and let these people understand the truth about their nationality and birthrights from our activity. Forget what we say. Forget what's coming out of our mouth. It's show and prove time. I've been showing and proving. Been showing people receipts. Been showing people plates that we've been had, that we're driving up and down the place here with plates, no licenses. Been showing people, you know, transcript from court. All these tickets right here. All these tickets gone. Dismissed. All these tickets dismissed because why? Nationality and birthrights. No bothering me anymore. Zero bothering me. Zero. Debating ass niggers. Forget these clowns debating. And anybody backing them. Anybody backing them. You're a fool. You're a jackass. And you can go suck yourself. Please go suck yourself. Because I'm not hearing nothing that you're saying if you have no status. Zero. So we're going to go to the Holy Quran that we're selling, that we're selling at Khalifa Media so that the Moors could have their book from their prophet because they can't go get it anywhere else because all these dirty Moors around here. Oh yeah, and on that note, don't forget that I'm not the same as Ali Muhammad, so don't compare me to him. I'm not the same as Lord Abba, so don't compare me to him. I'm not the same as those Brooklyn Temple Number 13 naturalization Moors. I'm not the same as them. Don't compare me to them. If you're dealing with Kudro, you deal with me and my classes. Don't put me in classes and show other people stuff. Not even Taj and whoever else. Because you're saying that, you know, Taj is your boy and you're not going against him. So don't bring him into none of this stuff. If you got issues with my stuff and what I teach, then deal with my stuff. Right? Stop drawing mores into this like all the mores are the same. All the mores aren't the same. There's dirty mores out here that we got to deal with them too. And we're dealing with them. They are getting dealt with. They are getting dealt with. So don't try to, you know what I mean, tie all these mores together like, you know, there's no dirty mores. Right? Conscious black whatever. I know who y'all are. Moors, active Moors, I know who y'all are. Islam, peace and love, hotep, all that. Dirty Moors, we know who y'all are too. And y'all already know that we've been going at y'all, so don't even, you know what I mean, try to play the background. Y'all better step your game up and start talking against Kudro or whatever like that and stop trying to ride coattails in order to get people to get down with your stuff. Madness that you're doing, selling packages and naturalizing people like they're foreigners in their own land. Because they... they they are classified as Negro black colored, even though they're Moors, they just don't know because y'all grand major or whatever Moors haven't told these people anything about their birthright until active Moors started calling you guys card, making you guys look like you don't know what the hell you're talking about. 
So it all ends today because revolution around the sun is starting up again tomorrow. And once revolution starts around the sun again, I'm telling y'all, we're done. Don't be, don't be looking at Canaan Land Moors for any, you know, black whatever, you know, justify something, prove something. After today, we're dealing with active Moors, and that's it. Anybody else, you're on your own. Go study. Go study. Because this is, this is, what, 2008 we got on this, right? They got people out here, they're doing lecture, they're bringing Ashra Kwesi here to come lecture or whatever like that. We got some Dr. Ben, whatever crap. You guys don't honor Dr. Ben. Get the hell out of here. Dr. Ben called y'all African Moors. Ashra Kwesi did a sit-down interview. Islam to brother Diallo Sekou L. More out in Florida, running the farm. We got the Moorish farm out there. For all the people that the Moors don't got nothing. There's a farm out in Florida where the Moors own the farm. And they're providing vegetation, fruits, whatever like that, to the community. Don't tell me what Moors don't have nothing. Brother sat down with Ashra Kwesi. Ashra Kwesi knows about the Moors. And he was very, he was very aware about the Moors. Very aware about the Moors. And he didn't talk none of that comedic whatever stuff like he was doing that Dr. Ben stuff. He was talking about Moors. And recognizing that, you know, well, you know, for our people to be recognized, they need to be tied to land. Well, Moors are tied to this land right over here. Been telling people that. Ashra Kwesi came out, told y'all, hearing that. We told y'all, Khalid Muhammad came out, told y'all that he's a Moor. Oh, you don't want to hear that. Well, you know, you got to take everything because Khalid Muhammad knew he was a black man. Buddy, stop it. Khalid Muhammad said that he's a Moor and said that he's not Kunta Kente, which means that he was telling you he's not African. And he was telling you that he's not black if he's a Moor. And he said, you know, Islam. And he's not Kunta Kente. And more and more he studies, he realized that he has to find out more. What do you think he's saying? M-O-R-E? More and more he has to study? No, he's saying more. M-O-O-R and M-O-O-R and M-O-O-R. But y'all too goddamn ignorant. You're too blinded. You're too caught up in your sinful ways, chasing fiat, selling information to your people to see and recognize that you've been told. What is the last time we're telling y'all? Either get down, either get down, proclaim your nationality and your birthright, and then say black power and all that stuff. Have a fez on and say black power, you got my black power. Have a fez on and go do some of them debates or whatever like that and whatever then, cool. Have a nationality. Have a turban. What are you guys talking about? Doesn't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter Negro, black color and all that stuff. You are going to be the beating stick from, from, from now moving forward. Every single time we get a chance, we're going to be beaten up on every single video, every single post, everything that you put out. We're going to use you as a beating stick to prove to the people that these people are idiots. And they're playing the people. Mark my words. Because, you know, again, Active more, Rami Salam L, he already got a video out today. He already got a video out for that Imam Bashir BS that you guys are pushing. He already got something out already. Today. While you guys playing around, whatever like that, you know what I mean? Thinking that you're doing something to try to put a negative spin on the Moors, the Moors, on a higher plane, looking at these guys on the low plane, like, these guys are stupid. Already have you checkmated. Already have you in the scope. You're going to start losing popularity. You might think it's fun now, but trust me. And oh yeah, 
I seen y'all video with y'all bloods and y'all crypts and all that stuff, pushing all that crap. Before we even go to the Holy Prophet, let's give some honors to some masters. Let's get this master on the record just so that we can let all the bloods and crypts know that these guys are playing them. Don't be fooled with these guys because they got cameras and they're coming around you guys and they're talking about sovereignty and whatever type of crap like that that they're giving you guys something. They're not giving you guys jack. They're selling you guys out to the same people who gave you guys the drugs to put in the community, gave you guys the guns to put in the community that, you know, you better be giving that stuff up. And stop playing games because, believe me, the standard was set with Chief Malik. Actually, we don't even do that. Pull that back out again. Just so. Just so. Y'all know that it's real. Just so you know that it's real. Right? Just so you know that it's real. Right? We've already been in contact with Chief Mustafa Malik. Angel L, who you might know as Jeff Fort, who's locked up right now in Supermax, right? And what did he say? This is Jeff Fort. Jeff Fort, y'all know Jeff Fort. Don't front like you don't know Jeff Fort, right? What did he say from the beginning of the letter? Islam to who? His brother from the MST of A in Canada. Jeff Fort. Keep playing around, Bloods and Crips. Keep playing around. He already checked, he already dealt with it. Y'all not supposed to be in those streets talking about eh, whatever like that. Y'all supposed to be the military of your people. Y'all supposed to be the ones defending these people out here getting shot up. But what y'all caught up in? Your sinful ways. Chasing some fiat. Back in the day, the drug dealers who I knew back in the day, they pay people's rent. The drug dealers who I knew back in the day, who I grew up around, they paid people's rent. They'll see a little a little brother on the street running with holes in his shoes and take him to the store and go buy him some sneakers. And his mom's gonna come out and thank the drug dealer. Thank you. Because welfare checks not enough. Can't get by. Oh, don't worry. Go fill your fridge up. Those are the drug dealers that I grew up around. Those are the drug dealers that I knew when I was coming up. Those were the drug dealers that were telling me, nah, don't be running no mule and stuff like that for us. We do that ourselves. You need to go to school. You go get an education. You may go make your mother proud. Don't be standing on the corner with us. That's why in Iron Sheik 3, I made the song, Eyes Up. Because that song was about a drug dealer who I knew. Who told us? Look, don't look at... I know it looks good or whatever. We got the bottles out here. We got the shoes. We got the car right there. And then tomorrow a different car. And then the next day a different car. And then the next day a different car. But don't get caught up in that. You go to school. Get your education. Be something. Be something. And all those drug dealers today, all those drug dealers today, who I knew back then, good job, bro. Glad you didn't fall victim to the streets like half these other fools out here. Because, you know, now they're retired. They got their house and stuff like that. They're chilling now. Made it through. So which one, you know, the ones that made it through, the ones that didn't get shot up because of some beef, the ones that's not doing 30 to life or whatever right now, for some street crap that they got themselves into.
you think it's not real out here, like I said, you got connected with Jeff Fort. Connected. Jeff Fort mailed me, Chief Malik, who y'all know. I know you drug dealers and all you bloods and crips or whatever. You know who Jeff Fort is. Don't even front. Page 193, an opposing witness, one defendant took the stand to paint a different portrait of what is meant to be an L. Ruckin family, respect, even protesting, protesting against apartheid in South Africa. So it's kind of good that y'all are out there, you know, Unity, Ferguson, and all that stuff. Yeah, but y'all should have been doing that since these times. But Jeff Fort Bin came and told y'all that you're Moors. He Bin came and told y'all that you have a nationality. He already laid down the principles or whatever. And y'all had, once again, sell out Negroes. Come and tell y'all that it's something different. And have y'all killing each other over blocks that are yours. If you have a nationality. If you're stateless niggers, then, you know, it's just black on black crime. Nobody cares about that and they could care less. It was as if there, was, there were two El Rockin organizations running around on the south side of Chicago. College-educated Leon McAnderson's testimony provided what was hoped to be a foil to Davis's. McAnderson said he knew nothing of a law rocket, drug dealing, a cache of weapons or plots to blow up even a balloon on behalf of on behalf of Gaddafi. Who these clowns are gonna say? Did Gaddafi have a nationality? Why not? Yeah, he did have a nationality. He was Libyan. And they assassinated him because he was bringing back the gold standard, just like Kennedy was doing. He was bringing back the gold standard on the continent of so-called Africa. That's why they killed Gaddafi. Go check. Don't believe what I'm saying. Go check the records and you will see that that's what it is. Go check the record and you'll see that Gaddafi was bringing back the gold standard. Who brings back the gold standard? That's Moore's talk. Right? That's like, you know, you're, you're going to hear Imam Bashir diss Moors and diss nationality and diss whatever, but he's talking about he knows what fiat is. And he knows that money is supposed to be backed by gold and silver. That's Moors talk. But they're dissing Moors. Leon Clarington Cortez McAnderson, 37 was born into a large Baptist family in Kansas City, Kansas. He received his GED, GED, attended junior college, and became a GED instructor. McAnderson met attorney Charles Knox in Missouri while doing community work. McAnderson moved to Chicago, his wife and their five children, in the summer of 1975 to study criminal justice administration at Northeastern Illinois University. Oh, speaking about that, I just want to put it on the record that Barack Obama is opening a presidential law library in Chicago. Why is he doing that? Why is he, why is he billing a presidential law library in Mecca? Why? Just, just, just all of a sudden, he just decided he's just going to build a presidential law library in Chicago? Oh, oh that's for the Illuminati right here. Yeah, that's for the Illuminati. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the Illuminati puppet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He playing games. Knox was a faculty at the university, and the professor recommended a scholarship for him. In Chicago, McAnderson said he worked with National Conference of Black Lawyers, the Urban League, Operation Push, and other neighborhood groups. In 1978, McAn McAnderson earned a bachelor's degree. While at Northeastern, he met some El Ruckins. The conversations were not about the organization, per se, he said. 
Instead, they revolved around the work that they were doing. McAnderson testified during direct examination by his attorney, Shendel Nagelberg. That's so you can go check the record. Make sure you go check the record to make sure that we're telling you really what it is. You know, don't let us fool you. Just let us check. Just check. McAnderson testified during direct examination by his attorney, Sheldon Nackelberg. Quote, they were involved in some educational programs at the University of Illinois. They worked with the commission dealing with racial problems in the Inglewood and Woodlawn area, he said. He attended his first El Rockin function at the fort in summer 1979. McAnderson and his family joined the group's annual family feast at 39th Street headquarters. Just so you go, go check to Mecca, 39th Head Street Quarter, just go check 39th Street and go see if the, the, the El Rockin headquarters used to be there. Matter of fact, why don't you go ask half those Moors in Chicago who come out of El Rockins? Now, you know they come out of El Rockins because they got their little pose, you know what I mean, like this, that they do, you know what I'm saying? You know that they're El Rockin, but there are more signs though. Go ask them about the headquarters, if it's legit, if this is real talk, or if Kujo is just talking some BS. He met Jeff Fort, members, leadership, and their families. Quote, at the time, I was under the impression that they were just a community organization, McAnderson said. You might say, a real cultural type foundation. They believed that, quote unquote, black people here in America who were descendants of slaves, came from the northern part of Africa, namely Morocco. And that their religion was Islam as opposed to Christianity. A couple of El Rockins invited him to a service in January 1980. Flattered, McAnderson accepted the invitation. That same year, he joined the organization, lured in by their progression, towards Sunni, Islam tradition, and strong family values. So this is the, um, this is, right now, we're going to the direct examination, quote for quote, between McAnderson and Nackelberg, or Nagelberg. McAnderson, quote, I wanted to get involved with some of the projects that the organization was doing. One of the things is that they worked closely with prisoners. They also had programs designed for young people. They were involved in different programs in the community, and that was my forte then, you know, working in the community. Nagelberg. At that time that you joined the El Rockins formally in 1980, have you ever used drugs? McAnderson, no. Nagelberg. Had you ever been arrested and charged with any crime? McAnderson, no. Nagelberg. When you joined the El Rockins, when he joined, so he was a member. When you joined the El Rockins in 1980, were you aware of anybody within the El Rockin organization who was using and abusing drugs? At McAnderson, I would say abusing drugs, but this was not allowed. Why they got Jeff Fort locked up right now? Why they got Chief Malik locked up right now? Supermax. With... Dahmer and people like that. People who eat people. People who kill their whole family. They got him locked up with them in Supermax. When this McAnderson testified that people were abusing drugs in the Rockins, but they weren't allowed to do that because, you know, that was the law laid down. McAnderson listed the rules and regulations of the El Rockins. No pill popping, no profanity, no drug selling, no possession of narcotics. Members paid $10 a month for dues, and the fabric of family was the key tenant. McAnderson was drawn to Fort and looked up to the revered leader. They talked about politics and family life. Fort acted as a counselor or minister for many of the El Rockins. McAnderson said he and Crenshaw prepared to travel to Libya in March 1986. Professor Charles Knox had told them about a nationwide delegation of Americans going to a peace conference. He said, the Islamic Cause Society 
a group that acted as a missionary agency for Islamic activities sponsored the gathering. McAnderson said that he told Ford about his plans and how visiting Africa would be one of the greatest opportunities in his life. Nagelberg, what did Ford say? McAnderson, he was real happy for us, you know. Nagelberg, did Mr. Ford command or tell you to do anything while you were over in Libya? McAnderson, nothing other than if we could go, go. Nagelberg, did he tell you that you should talk about committing any acts on the United States? McAnderson, none whatsoever. Nagelberg, did he in any way give you any direction as to people to contact when you go over there? McAnderson, no, he did not. Crenshaw and McAnderson flew to Libya via Morocco due to the U.S. travel ban. U.S. travel ban. So there was a the U.S. travel ban in 86 that dark-skinned people or people in general couldn't fly directly to Libya. They had to go through Morocco. Why, why would they have to go through Morocco? This question. They landed in Tripoli on March 13, 1986. The duo soon saw Charles Knox at the hotel with a large American delegation. Thousands of delegates from around the world were at the conference. McAnderson said it was a week and a half of transfer of a trans it was a week and a half transformative experience. I'm gonna read no more. Let's go by the book. Since you don't read and you think that you're doing what you're supposed to do because polite and sonetter are telling y'all right that they're gonna do stuff for you or whatever like that but they're not gonna tell you tell you about this book the almighty black peacestone nation the rise the fall and resurgence of an american gang natalie wymore lance williams so you know what it's about to be a gang banger and being a gang banger has nothing to do with going marching and picketing all over the goddamn place about some unity and make people stop breaking up Storm. They're supposed to stop doing that. They're not supposed to be doing that in the first place. That's common sense. You don't break up your own stuff. How about you go and tear down them police stations of the people who did whatever to you? How about that? We're not going to go there, though. We're going to play this game with people. Right? Play this game. Going and, and, and getting with with these drug dealers and these bloods and crips and all whatever like that doing videos with them under the guise of their we're taking it to the hood so we can show the people in the hood that the whatever selling those people out selling them out oh yeah and if you didn't know a brother just got shot in philly by police once again when, you know, Islam to Brother Seth and Rabe were putting us onto that one because we were on that, we were reaching, we were researching that for hours. Then nothing was online for hours. It might be up there now, but Brother got shot by police in Philly. Once again, why? Dead status more than likely. You know, and that's real. All the lists, just go through the list of all of them that got shot up. Guarantee they have a European name, which means that they're property of the European, which means the European could do anything that he wants with them because they are property, because name denotes possession. And the first thing that we have to do when we point fingers at these police and say, oh yeah, police is doing whatever to our people, don't be victim, just look at your hand and realize there's three fingers pointing at your dumb ass that you never paid attention to. And you should probably consider why you pointing at somebody else, but Allah has it so good that when you point at somebody, three fingers are pointing at your dumb ass. But Drew Ali told the Moors, you know, you're only going to learn at point of a sword. So 
It is what it is. Crazy how time flies when you're having fun. 743. You even get to the profit yet. So let's do that right now. And let's put this on the record too, once more, just so, you know, just so the people can see why we have a website called Khalifa Media, khalifamedia.com, and the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, reproduction of the original 1926 print. This is the same one that Imam Bashir showed in his first video, trying to say that, well, see, the Moors don't even follow an order. They're hypocrites because the Holy Quran book that they got says that they shouldn't be selling the Quran and look, they have it for sale for $13 on the website. See how real that really is. See how real it really is. And Islam to Khalifa Media, for, you know, stressing the point. Islam to Brother Supreme El, with Pardon the interjection show for stressing the point, but we're just going to stress the point again, just to, you know, we don't want to stress anything, we want to fracture the point. We want to, we don't want to stress fracture, we want to fracture, we want to break the point so people know why Moors are selling the Holy Quran of the Moors Science Temple of America, Moors Holy Temple of Science on the website Khalifa Media. The lesson of this pamphlet are not for sale, but for the sake of humanity. And then Imam Bashir stopped there and then ran off. You know what I mean? Slow running, but he <laughs> still ran off. <laughs> right? Running very slow, but he still ran off from there. Instead of telling the people what's up. Oh yeah, and for the record, um, we just got note in the chat from somebody who grew up Muslim, going to mosque and all that stuff like that, that imams aren't supposed to be heavyset. Just for the record, imams are not supposed to be heavyset. So any heavyset imams that you see out there, know that they're probably running a fraud because imams are not supposed to be heavyset. The lessons of this pamphlet are not for sale, but for the sake of humanity. As I am a prophet and a servant is worthy of his hire, you can receive this pamphlet at expense. You can receive this pamphlet at expense. Expense means the cost that it takes to make this. So we can't sell it, but you can receive it at expense. And whatever cost that it makes to put this together, we can at least charge that much. Just put it on the record. Chapter 8. Jesus reveals to the people their sinful ways. And keep in mind that the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America and the Moorish Holy Temple of Science right here it says it, was divinely prepared by the noble prophet, Drew Ali. So this didn't come from some Aquarian gospel. Because the Aquarian gospel has chapters that aren't in this. And this has chapters that aren't in the Aquarian gospel, so it's not the same. Because this was divinely prepared by the prophet. This was divinely prepared for the prophet, by the prophet, for the Moors. And it was divinely prepared because these were specially selected chapters of an ancient book given to the people. Divinely prepared for them divinely prepared not just some put together you know like like me and rami did you know we just go online find some stuff and just put it together and make a book this was divinely prepared so there's keys in here that are supposed to be given to every single person that considers themselves negro black colored so they can read the book 
especially if they love Jesus, Yahshua, whatever you want to call him, dark-skinned prophets, especially if you love them. You're supposed to have a Quran. I don't care if you call yourself more or not. My mom, she doesn't call herself more, but she has a Quran right next to her Bible. Why? Because she read the Quran and she realized that yeah, it's got some stuff in it. It's real. But she loves Jesus. She loves her Jesus. Jesus is her Lord and Savior. But she has a Quran on her nightstand. Right next to her Bible. Not because her son gave it to her. But because she read it for herself. And seen that there's keys in there. And you can get the Quran online for free. So don't think you have to buy it. You're not saying buy it. You don't just, you know, book for them. People like books, stuff like that. So they buy the book. But you can go download the PDF. Go to your print man. Tell your print man, hey, could you make this into a booklet for me? And they'll make it into a booklet. Any print store, Kinko's or whatever, Staples or whatever like that. It's really not serious like that. This is people's birthright. And Mobu Jali left keys for the people, for them to be free. That these people are saying, well, you can't be free if you're more, when I just showed you all those receipts with no taxes. What no taxes mean? That you're free. Free of being encumbered. Why? Because tax is Roman. Tax is colonizer. So if I'm not paying tax, that means I'm free from the colonizer. Jesus reveals to the people their sinful ways. In all the cities of Orissa, Jesus taught. At Katak, by the riverside, he taught, and thousands of the people followed him. One day, a car of Jagannath was hauled along by scores of frenzied men, and Jesus said, Behold, a form without a priest passes by, a body with no soul, a temple with no altar fire. That's similar to that crap that we watch today, that you had all those people on there, frenzied men, chasing after this stream called whatever more science and Islamism by Imam Bashir and Sanetter Studios. Frenzied men. There are some women on there too. Frenzied. Flapping at the gum like they're saying something, like they're teaching something. All they're doing is quoting Europeans. Who they say is the devil, but all they're doing is quoting Europeans though. They didn't quote no Asiatics. All they did was quote Europeans for two hours. Quote Europeans. And then Morris pull up a law dictionary and then, you know, oh, we're following Europeans. But you just did it, you're just quoting Europeans for two hours. Well, how come you're not calling yourself nigger? You're quoting Europeans. But Morris is niggers because we have Black's Law Dictionary and whatever. That sounds like the hypocrisy right there. If you ask me. You know, you don't want to ask me, though, because you're not going to like the answer that you get when you ask me. The car of Krishna is an empty thing, for Krishna is not there. This car is but an idol of a people drunk on the wine of carnal things. So we're telling y'all, all you people, you want to keep following these debaters and all this type of stuff? Even Sanada had to laugh when I called him Sanada McMahon. Because he knows it's true. Why is he laughing for? Even when I call them the great debaters, they're laughing. What do you think? Why are they laughing for? Because they know that they're playing people. You think they're just laughing on camera as mockery to what I said? They're laughing because they got got. That the people are stupid. <laughs> they don't even know that these guys are laughing at them. Allah lives not in a noise of tongues. There is no way to him from an idol shrine. Allah's meeting place with man is in the heart. 
Same thing Nobu Ali told him more. Where could you meet Allah in the heart? And in a still voice, in a still small voice, he speaks. And he who hears is still ill. And all the people said, teach us to know the Holy One who speaks within the heart, Allah of the still small voice. And Jesus said, the Holy Breath cannot be seen with mortal eyes, nor can men see the spirit of the Holy One. But in their image, man was made. And he who looks into the face of man looks into the image of Allah who speaks within. Well, you need a nationality for that. Don't think you're going to go look into Negro, black, colored people and talk about, yeah, Allah is in them. They're dead. They're civil or more twos. They have no status. That's why they're vibrating on such a low frequency that people don't even want them around. They just want to eliminate them people. Which they're doing. As we speak right now, somebody's getting something for being stately. When and when man honors man, he honors Allah. And what man does for man, he does for Allah. And and you must bear in mind that when harm, when man harms in thought or in word or deed another man, he does a wrong to Allah. Quick note. When man does wrong, when man harms in thought or word or deed another man, man is Moorish American national. That's a man. Digest that. Everybody's not a man. Man is Moorish American national. If you would serve Allah, who speaks within the heart, just serve your near of kin and those who are no kin, the stranger at your gates, the foe who seeks to do you harm. Assist the poor and help the weak. Do harm to none and covet not what is not yours. Then with your tongue, the Holy One will speak and he will smile behind your tears will light your countenance with joy and fill your hearts with peace. And then the people asked, To whom shall we bring gifts? Where shall we offer sacrifice? And Jesus said, Our Father Allah acts not for needless waste of plant, of grain, of dove, of lamb. They, that which you burn on any shrine you throw away, no blessing can attend the one who takes the food from hungry mouths to be destroyed by fire. When you would offer sacrifice unto Allah, just take your gift of grain or meat and lay it on the table of the poor. From it an incense will rise to heaven, which will return to you with blessedness. Blessedness. Tear down your idols. They can hear you not. Turn all your sacrificed altars into fuel for the flames. <laughs> Make human hearts your altars and burn your sacrifices with the fire of love. And all the people were entranced and would have Jesus as a God. But Jesus said, I am your brother man. Just come to show you the way to Allah. You shall not worship man. Praise Allah, the Holy One. Everybody's supposed to have access to these blessings. Everybody. So now that we're done with the intro. <laughs> Let's really get to class what class is about today. The black sellouts, the agents, the so-called conscious, the so-called conscious community, the 
conscious traders who like to diss more. Conscious traders like to diss more. You know, the so called conscious black man, woman, whatever. You know, and I'm not talking about the Moorish American national. I mean, you know, the low level, small, le small case, M A N, right? The Negro, colored, black people. I don't care what I what it what I call myself. It's okay. You know, I could call myself anything and have rights. You know, you know what I mean. You know, they're showing pictures of people who being lynched or whatever. And then asking the question, aren't we humans? No, you're not. Blacks are its. And its have no rights. So if you want to call yourself Negro, Black, Colored, or let's just leave Colored and Negro. If you want to call yourself Black, go right ahead. Don't get mad when these people violate you. But, uh, no, shut the hell up. If you want to be an adjective, if you want to call yourself pale when you're brown, go right ahead. Because only somebody that's incompetent would willingly be non-descendable. Only somebody incompetent would willingly take the position of not being able to pass anything down to your future generation. Or to be receive anything from your past generation. If you want to be adjective, if you want to be it, Go right ahead. Don't forget, Stephen King put out the movie It. You should go watch that movie. And then ask yourself, do you really want to be It? If you want to be It, go right ahead. You're not even stopping. Go be It, please. I hope something happens to you. I hope you have to face the sword so you can come running so we can tell you we told you. We told you so. Told you so. Drew Ali came a hundred years ago, told you so. And you don't want to go what he's saying. Tampa. When Anthony Aramoselli Oiboki came to America in 1960, he heard racial slurs. Not from Klansmen in white sheets, but from dashiki wearing blacks. Guess who that is? Yep. The conscious coons who think that they know their self. Quote, just because African Americans wear kente cloth does not mean they embrace everything that is African, said Oiboki, a Nigerian business owner in Tampa. I caught a lot of hell from the frat boys at Tuskegee University, a historically black college. They were always trying to play with my intelligence. This was a time when folks were shouting, Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Yet, when I called someone black, they would say, Why are you so cruel? Why are you calling us black? If they saw me with a girl, they would yell to her, What are you doing with that African? Three decades later, not much has changed. Africans and black Americans often fail to forge relationships in the classroom and the workplace. They blame nationality, ethnicity, culture, economics, and education. I repeat, and I quote, they blame nationality, ethnicity, culture, economics, and education. A shared complexion does not equal a shared culture, nor does it automatically lead to friendships says Kofi Glover, a native of Ghana and a political science professor at the University of South Florida. Whether we like it or not, Africans and African Americans have two different and very distinct cultures. That's a fallacy, retorts Omali Yeshetela, president of St. Petersburg National People's Democratic Euro Movement, a black nationalist group whose name means freedom in Swahili. Yashitelli is from St. Petersburg and was formerly known as Joe Waller. Formerly known as Joe Waller. Whether blacks live on the Ivory Coast or Atlantic Coast, 
Yashadi contends, were all the same. There is no cultural differences between Africans and African Americans. Naim Akbar, a psychology professor at Florida State University, sides with Glover. The only way we'll ever begin to appreciate each other is to recognize and embrace our cultural differences, says Akbar, who was born in America. Slavery is the tie that binds, but the legacy also keeps the two groups apart. Some local blacks argue that the closest they've ever come to Africa is Bush Gardens. <laughs> the fact that African leaders profited from selling others is a betrayal, and many blacks refuse to forgive or forget. Quote, a lot of us do harbor a lot of hostility toward Africans, says Tamper poet James Tokley. Many Africans have no idea what our ancestors endured during slavery. Glover agrees that while some Africans suffered under colonial rule and apartheid, not all can relate to the degradation of slavery. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why not all Africans can relate to the degradation of slavery. Not all Africans can relate to the degradation of slavery. Not all Africans can relate to the degradation of slavery. I mean, if you come from there, it should be a common theme across the whole continent that, you know, the people in America came from over there. And you want to know why they don't accept you. In Ghana, he says, we did not experience white domination like the Africans in Kenya, Zimbabwe, or South Africa. We do not understand the whole concept of slavery or its effect on the attitude of a lot of African Americans mainly because we were not exposed to it. That's Ghana. Isn't that the same place where they say that they took them from or whatever they can not know? West Africa, okay. East, West, North, South, okay. West Africa, this is where Ghana is, Nigeria, all that stuff where they say they came from. But they're saying that over there that they can't even relate to what slavery is because there was no white domination over there. Interesting. How, what, what, how, how haven't Moors been telling these people for the past hundred years, forget slavery crap? Hmm. Much bad blood stems from interrelations between Africans and whites. Oibiki says, for example, he ate at some segregated restaurants in the 1960s. A lot of African Americans were upset, were upset that white people would serve me but not them. Hmm. Interesting. So Africans from the continent came over here. And then they go to the segregated restaurants and they get served. And then the people who are here, been here, that these people know that they came from Africa or whatever, they can't get served at a so-called white establishment because, you know, they're black guys. We don't want black guys in our store. Use the black door and all that stuff. This should be making sense to you dumb Negroes who are following the so-called conscious crew that's telling you that you came over here on slave ships or whatever like that. But then the African that came over here, he's not playing no slave game and all that stuff and that his people or whatever like that. He's going in the white door, sit down, give me a white plate with some white rice and let me get my food, get the hell out of here. No lynching or nothing. Fact, oh yeah, how about that one? How about y'all find me some Africans that they lynched from the continent that came over here? Because if y'all are from there, you're the same people, then, you know, they should be getting the same treatment that you're getting. If you claim that you're African and you came from, you know, whatever like that, you know, then, or is it true that you Negroes are lying to yourself or been lied to? You're not really from over there. You're really from here. And you have a status as more. You can go as sundry free moors and Delaware's forgotten folks where they talk about the moors and how Negroes are really moors and blacks are really moors and colored people are moors and Frederick Douglass had freedmen papers and, you know, Ida B. Wells had freedmen papers and Harriet Tubman had freedmen papers in order to get out of slavery, which is really moorish paperwork in olden times that we still do today and then people are dissing saying that oh yeah we can't do that but then they got a picture of 
Frederick Douglass. Well, matter of fact, they say that they're his descendants or whatever like that coming to give you a lecture to make you donate to their school $20 million. But Frederick Douglass had Friedman papers, which means he was a Moor. Because only Moors do paperwork, you already know that. Don't even front. You know only Moors do paperwork because all the conscious community black guys, that's what they taught y'all. You don't need that paperwork crap. The Moors paperwork don't work. So obviously only Moors do paperwork. Frederick Douglass did paperwork. Harriet Tubman did paperwork in order to get out of slavery, which they did. But y'all don't want to do that today. Y'all listening to the great debaters try to remove you from the concept of nationality and birthright under the guise of a debate. And the winner is the one who gets the most applause, not the one who puts out the proper information. Honors to Brother Alina L. Bay too, and Sister Kadira L. Bay, and all the Washita Moors that got their paperwork, and everything else, ID cards, whatever. And they're living like Moors, not being encumbered. Because not all Moors get arrested because they have paperwork. You know, like all these guys talk, every Moor gets arrested. I ain't never been arrested. I ain't never even seen a jail cell before. Ever. In my life. Even when I did dirt. Never. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Especially after coming into Moorish knowledge and exercising, having my own plates, getting pulled over by highwaymen and all that stuff. Never been arrested. Never had handcuffs on me since I've been in Moorish science. Never. So am I to be, you know what I mean, going with the fact that all Moors get arrested? No, because all Moors then got arrested. That's a fallacy that they're talking about. Trying to scare you. What are they doing? Using the slave man tactics against you. Using the slave master tactics against you. Scare you into not leaving the plantation. If you leave the plantation, Massa is going to arrest you. Or if you don't leave the plantation, Massa is going to kidnap you and put you in a cell because you showed the paperwork to be free. That sounds like some house niggers to me. Trying to tell you don't leave the plantation? That's house nigger stuff. They're telling you don't leave the plantation. That's house niggers. Digest what I just said. The black conscious people are telling you don't proclaim your nationality. Because if you proclaim your nationality, you're going to get arrested by the European. The equivalent to that is you going to one of the slaves. No. Harriet Tubman is coming tonight. 11 o'clock. We're going to meet at the barn. What do you mean? Why, why are you going to proclaim your nationality with Harriet Tubman? No, she said that she got the paperwork and you know what I mean? All you have to do is just go with her down the little stream in the back or whatever and then we're free. Oh, no. No, I ain't doing that. Don't do that. If you do that, the master is going to find out. And then they're going to send the dogs, and then they're going to send the whatever, and then they're going to do you like Jim Bob. You see what happened to Jim Bob? When Jim Bob tried to escape the plantation, they lynched Jim Bob. You want to get lynched? That's how these freaking guys are talking. House Negroes. Don't worry about them talking about Kudos, nigger. <laughs> You know what I mean? We already told y'all. We already told y'all. Nationality card up, paperwork up. They can say whatever they want. I know that they got licenses. I know Bashir got license, social or whatever like that. Whatever, any type of state, whatever stuff that you got. Renting, I know he's got some slum lord, some European as his landlord or whatever. You're not, you know, he's not going against that devil. You're not going about the devil that made the fridge that he's using. You know what I mean? That's full <laughs> or empty, whichever way you want to look at that. 
right? I know people got cameras filming stuff. Oh, they're not going at that European that gave them that camera that got them uploading videos. They're not going at that European. That's that guy's not the devil. Only certain Europeans are the devil. Don't let these guys play you, okay? Please don't let these guys play you. Please don't let them play. And we got a good question, <laughs> right? One of the more is asking a real good question. How come none of these individuals, right, who have seen Moore's in action, seen Moore's beat up cases, seen receipts, seen whatever, how come you never went back to the black conscious guys and say, hey, black conscious guy, show me how your black conscious stuff works? Because, you know, I see you got cameras around here, Sony, Toshiba, or whatever like that. That's European. I see you got computer, Apple. That's European. Oh, you got European stuff, but then you're dissing Moors who are, you know, saying that the Europeans are fellow man and we should kind of, you know, work with them or whatever like that. If they're down with assisting us, nah, not going to go there. You're not going to read no more of this because we already beat them up that the Africans know what's up, right? The Africans know what's up. Like these people are front. They're not even serious about life. They're just front, quote unquote, African. You know, African. What the hell's an African? You might as well call yourself black. Oh, they call. They do call yourself black. Because every African that I know tells me, "Don't call me African. I'm Congolese. Don't call me African. I'm Nigerian. Don't call me African. I'm Ghanaian. Don't call me African. I'm Eritrean. Don't call me African. I'm Zimbabwean." Don't call me African, I'm, you know, Ethiopian. Don't call me African, I'm Senegalese. Don't call me African, I'm wherever they come from on the continent. Just like Ashra Kweezy said, you better be tied to land. Well, if you're over here as a slave from over there, and you came over here, and you're a slave, if you're a slave, that means you can't prove foreign citizenship. And if you can't prove foreign citizenship in the Americas, automatically you're more. Not even to discuss. If you come from somewhere else to the Americas, and you can't prove where you come from, which these people can't prove where they come from, because what are they doing? Going to European to go get DNA tests or whatever like that, see if they come from the continent and all that stuff, which tribe they belong to. But what are you doing all that? Why don't you just be more? You're you're in the Moorish Empire. Just be more. Ipso jur. Moorish subjects. Just Google that. See how much stuff comes up. And then ask yourself, how come all this European stuff is coming up about Ipso jur Moorish subjects? How come all this paperwork? Go and go just Google Ipso jur Moorish subjects and see how much Europeans have paperwork out there claiming that they're ipso germ more subjects and going claiming houses or whatever and winning and really it's not unfortunate because y'all getting what you deserve because you listen to these black conscious idiots who don't have any Thing up here just blank space between their ears just hollow just hit them in the head of the hollow hollow head I was going to read this but we can skip this you can google this yourself it's called History House, an irrelevant history magazine, that's the website, historyhouse.com, and you're going to go for the article called Love of Fez, Part 1, Love of Fez, Part 1, actually we'll just read this part.
Turbulent time. The fez had been introduced in 1926 by Mahmud II to replace the turban. Mahmud then, head of the Ottoman Empire, that was to be divvying up among the various European nations and partially grow into Turkey, was raised by a Creole mother. Creole, huh? Interesting. He had the same sort of longing for Europe as Ataturk did. He'd already flirted with colonial style, three-cornered hat. His advisors duly noted that the three-cornered hat was supposed to reflect the Holy Trinity, at which point Mahmud wisely, if regretfully, dismissed and possibly at, and dismissed the possibility of the hat gracing the closets and heads of his Islamic countrymen. Soon after, though, a shipment arrived from Tunis of venerable fezes, as Jeremy Seal, author of A Fez of the Heart, travels around Turkey in search of a hat. A Fez of the Heart travels around Turkey in search of a hat remark. If these fezes were not perhaps as Western as he had hoped, they at least would provide him with a clean beat, a clean break from the burdensome turban. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do not to wear a hat. Yet, when it came time to pray, the hat could be knocked off when the worshiper bent his head to the ground. Hence, brimless hats were eminently practical from the standpoint of prayer, if useless in keeping the sun out of one's eyes. In a land beset with tradition, the transition from turban to fez did not go easy. In the mid-1830s, traveler Thomas Alum noted, the inhabitants still refused to relegate their costume by direction of the sultan. They refused to doff the cherished turban for the recently introduced fez. Western journalists unleashed a litany of disparaging comments. A Reverend Walsh intoned a miserable substitute for the splendid turban. Sir Adolfo Slade similarly lauded the lost head wrap. The magical effects of a turban are well known. It gives depth to light eyes, expression to dark eyes. It softens harsh features, rallies delicate ones. So they already know what's up. I mean, it's not even a secret. Jeremy Seal. So love of fans, love of fans, historyhouse.com. Uganda, they love the Fez. Even though so-called black conscious people are going to diss, you know, and then they're going to claim that they came from Africa on the continent, they got the Fez. Do your research on YouTube. King Freddy. Just Google King Freddy, Uganda, Buganda, and see what comes up. Just watch those videos and just see what comes up. And ask yourself, how come... I'm claiming to be African. I came over here on a slave ship, but I'm not getting down with the Fez. I'm not getting down with the Moors. When at least we can go to Uganda to know that they got the Fez in Uganda to today. Till today. Look at him staring at you with disgust in his face. Look at him. Look at those eyes. Just giving you the Taj shrug the shoulders. Asking himself, what's wrong with these people? Why don't they want their culture? What's wrong with them? Tisk, tisk, tisk. To the conscious blacks. Tisk, tisk, tisk. So what they're going to do is they're going to say, see, look, the Moors working with the cracker. See the Moors working with the cracker? See they got the fez on because the Moors 
work with the cracker to kill Africans. Oh no, these are Africans. <laughs> these are Africans working with the European to kill their own people with a feather. These aren't Moors in the context of how they're talking. These are Africans. These are people from the continent who, because of them being in subjugation, had to work for the European. And what the European do? Slap a fez on them so they can hate their own stuff. It's called It's called the art of war. Let's go get the book. Don't believe me. No. Put them in a turban. Make them go do whatever to their people. And have their people scared of their own culture so they can go chase Christianity or whatever else. But these aren't Moors in the context of how they're talking. The great debaters who diss Moors and then show these pictures to try to show Moors are enslaving Africans. No, 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 no. Go do your research and you'll find out that all the so-called slave forts are in African countries, not Moorish countries. Yeah, all the slave forts, where they say that they took you from and they had you housed in there until the boats came for them, blah, 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 blah. You know, for their story. Keep in mind, keep in mind, right? Keep in mind that all the slave forts where they housed you before they put you on the ship, it was so-called African countries where those slave forts are, not countries with more. Oh, this is an interesting point that, they ne that they'll never bring up to you. Idi Amin Dada was the third president of Uganda. Uganda, same place where Buganda is, where they got the Fezzo. Ruling from 1791 to, 17, to, to 1971 to 1979. Amin joined the British Colonial Regiment, the King's African Rifles, in 1946, serving in Kenya and Uganda. So Idi Amin, who all these guys hold up as, yeah, the black African god-man kicking the European out of Africa and all that stuff. He was down with the British stuff wearing the fez too. But they'll never tell you about that part of his story. Once again, Africans working with the European, right, African working with the European in order to enslave their own people, not more. So as soon as they start showing these pictures, slap your forehead and say, oh my gosh, Kujo's right, they're trying to use our own against us. When this is subjugation right here, these are Moors that lost their birthright, became niggers, were subjugated, and then they used the customs of the Moors, the, the cultural customs, right? The, the attire of the Moors, they used the attire of the Moors in order to get the people to fear being a Moor. When you're not supposed to be fear being a Moor. Because why? Because in 1913, Nobu Juali came and took away all the secrets. Nobu Juali came and brought you your culture back. Under the under under the principle of love. So that when you wear your fez and you go out there, people immediately 
are going to not go to this when they see you. They're not going to go to this in their mind when they see you. Immediately, they're going to take it back to the individual who came to all these nations in the world at one time and brought them something of significance that they still hold today. I repeat, Nobu Juali, who all these guys are hating, saying, oh, they are, I don't know. If I'm a Moor, then Nobu Juali has to be my prophet, and I don't know. Harlem Jews were more. They don't even have no pictures of Nobu Juali and all that stuff saying Nobu Juali is their prophet. But what are you guys, what are you talking about? Moor is your birthright. Moor has been here before Nobu Juali. So what's the issue? If you want to be a member of the Moorish Science Temple, then yeah, you got to recognize Nobu Juali. Outside of the Moorish movement, Nobu Juali is just another brother that, you know, got some info. If you want to study it, great. If you don't want to study it, no big deal. We're not going to hate on you. But, you know, you're saying that you're more Moorish American, you better have some allegiance with, with your prophet. It's only logical. He's the one that brought your nationality back to you. Nobody else brought your nationality back to you. The Senegalese Tyrellers, that's supposed to be French, you know, you can talk to Cracktick out there, you know, he's a French guy. Um, spelled T-I-R-A-I-L-L-E-U-R-S. So the Senegalese Tyrellers, Tyrellers, were a corpse of colonial infantry in the French army recruited from Senegal. French West Africa. Oh, so they're Africans. They're not Moors. They're Africans that sold out. They're not Moors that sold out. They're Africans that sold out. They're not Moors that sold out. This is a Senegalese that's working with the French to go do whatever to their own people and shot the fez on them so that when he goes out there and does whatever the descendants of those people even them would dismiss their own culture five Sudanese men and a young boy posed for the camera wearing a variety of Egyptian Army military uniform. Not Moors. Africans. Now we're putting this into context of how they talk. But keep in mind that African and Moor is synonymous. So technically these are Moors. Because Africans are Moors. And it's not even, you know, nothing to debate. You know what I mean? Chinese did bad stuff to Chinese people, and they don't go around bitching at each other about that guy did it, right? and then those Chinese over there are the bad Chinese, and then these Chinese over here are the ones that went to war. Everybody sold out and has sellouts and stuff like that. You know, big deal. That's why the prophet came. To square everything back up. Right? We'll just put that up there for you again, crack pit. T-I-R-A-I-L-L-E-U-R-S. T-I-R-A-I-L-L-E-U-R-S. And that's supposed to be French according to what this is saying. Right? This photograph shows German East African Shut Troop Askaris captured by British Rhodesian troops during the First World War, December 1916. Once again, I'm telling you, German East Africans, German East African, German East African, what do you mean for German East African? Yeah, East Africans colonized by Germans. British Rhodesian, Cecil Rhodes, 
you know, Rhodesia, Cecil Rhodes and all that stuff. Yeah. All these Africans that sold out. And have the fez on. Africans. Don't forget, you say that you're Africans, right? Conscious black people. Don't forget, you say you're Africans. So this is really you right here selling out your own people. Remember you guys that said you came over here on slave ships or whatever? Well, yeah. Here's you guys selling out your own people. But to school you, we'll let you know that you're really Moors. We ain't mad at you. you know what I mean, we're not hating on you. We know what you did, but it's okay. It's all right. This is a new era of time now. And all men must proclaim their free national name in order to be recognized in the nation that they live and the nations of the earth. Okay. Soldiers of the King African Rifles. Not the more African rifles, not the Moorish African rifles, the King's African rifles. The King's African rifles. What they got on? The feds, once again. Selling out. This is similar to Sonetta doing that stuff with the Brooklyn Temple 13 Moors. And then he's sitting there with his hand on his chest like he's a Moor, like he's down with the Moors or whatever like that, when it's really not really what's going on. Right? Just have it on just for show. You know, doing the pose just for show. You know, saying that, you know, yeah, we honor them, but then he's in the background telling Bashir, hey, what about Brooklyn intelligence or whatever? You forgot about going in on him, you know, and then pulling the master, you know, drawing the whip and whipping Bashir, you know, <laughs> let's go, man, like time's going or whatever, <laughs> right? Slave masters, slave masters gave in their own people, right? We're going to put this on the record too. Islam to new more that we we just we just got in contact with, and oh skirmisher, huh? <laughs> we just got in contact with a brother who um made some comments on um, one of these videos. You know, it's real good. I get excited to be honest with you. I get excited when Moors come out the woodworks and they bring the fire. You know what I mean? You know, they come out the woodworks with their with their wood to burn and they bring some fire on these conscious blacks. You know, who they thought they could just, you know, come out, talk, whatever, say whatever, and then some more just get pissed off or whatever, like Rami and just say, this guy's a Cointel Pro agent. Why are you guys listening to this guy? You know what I mean? What's the problem? <laughs> right? More just get frustrated and say, forget it. You know what I mean? We're not even... Play games that you people don't want, that's what's up. Right? That's what's up. So, Islam to the good brother, um, Biggie Ali Bey, he made some comments, and we just want to put, put his comments on the record just so that, you know, with regard to all these fezes and stuff like that, so people can, um, you know, have a, have a perspective from another more. And he was talking to some brother, you know, comedic brother, Noon Netaru, who we know, we know, he don't got no Noon Netaru on his license or whatever. You know, stop fronting Noon Netaru. There ain't no Noon Netaru. You're just that on Facebook and YouTube. If we go in your wallet, we hold you down, put your hands behind your back, hold you down, hog tie you, and go in your pockets, find your wallet, we're going to find your name is John or some shit like that. Get the hell out of here, Noon Netaru. Right? Don't let your eyes deceive you, family. I'm going to New York to put Shaka and Seti in their place. You must have a global understanding of history to understand what happened. I have several books from the 1800s that explain how kids were captured and sent to other countries and raised to fight against other blacks. That's why slaves were not allowed to read. They made those soldiers wear fezes to confuse other blacks to think that our crown, the fez, was an enemy. These people had no choice. Bloods and Crips are fighting and killing each other as we speak, and no one is calling them sellouts or Uncle Tom. Don't fall far for those divide, 
Don't fall for those divide and conquer schemes. That's exactly why they made them wear feathers to confuse you and you people still can't connect to the history today. I promise you that I'm going to embarrass Shaka when I get there in two months. Remember my name, Diggy Ali Bay. I got a book for you too, and for Seti, to put all those Congo rumors to bed. The CIA and the cult of intelligence. It will tell you that the CIA hired people from Cuba and other countries and put feathers on their heads. There it is, the CIA and the cult of intelligence. And just for all the searching more, it is, there is a PDF available online, free. The CIA and the cult of intelligence. Go we'll check that out. Give some honors to the illustrious, the illustrious, the illustrious forerunner of the prophet, Marcus Messiah Garvey. And we'll put two of his little readings out. First one, the propaganda of our enemies. For the purpose of creating doubts about the work of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, many attempts have been made to cast a shadow and gloom over our work. They have written, they have even written the most uncharitable things about our organization. They have spoken so unkindly of our effort, but what do we care? They spoke unkindly and uncharitable about all the reform movements that have helped in the betterment of humanity. Sound familiar? That don't sound familiar. That sounds real familiar to what this brother by the name of Noah Juali came and was speaking to the Moors. The betterment of humanity. But you know, Marcus Garvey and Noah Juali, they have no connection because you know, Noah Juali said Moors and Garvey said Negro, so you know. No Dwali said we're not Negro black colored, so you know, forget what Marcus Garvey said, even though in this same uh, book that we sell right here, it says that you know Marcus Garvey is the forerunner of Noble Dwali. But you know, we're, you know, we'll let you come to your own conclusions about that. They maligned the great movement of the Christian religion, they maligned the great liberation movements of America, of France, of England, of Russia. Can we expect them to even to escape being maligned in this, our desire for liberation of Africa and the freedom of 400 million Negroes of the world? We have unscrupulous men and organizations working in opposition to us, some trying to capitalize on the new spirit that has come to the Negro to make profit out of it to their own selfish benefit. Some are trying to set back the Negro from seeing the hope of his own liberty and thereby poisoning our people's mind against the motives of our organization. But every sensible, far-seeing Negro in this enlightened age knows what propaganda means. Oh, that means he must have dictionaries and stuff like that. If he knows what words mean, then that means he had to have dictionaries or something like that to know what words mean, to use certain words, liberty, propaganda, humanity. He just using those words because he knows them? I doubt it. I really doubt it. It is the medium of discrediting that which you are opposed to so that the propaganda of our enemies will be of little avail as soon as we are rendered able to carry our people scattered throughout the world the message of our great organization. Marcus Gardner. Crocodiles as friends, men of the Negro race, let me say to you that a greater, a greater future is in store for us. We have no cause to lose hope, to become faint-hearted. You hear that, more? We have no cause to lose hope or to become faint-hearted because of some little pocket of Negroes that claim to be conscious, dissing your birthright and your nationality. Don't be swayed by them. They're stateless. 
They are stateless. They are civil letter more tools, dead in the eyes and the view of the law. They are not in full life. They choose that position because, like I said in the beginning, half these moors who are in front of tapes or whatever like that, calling themselves Negro, black colored, African, it doesn't matter what you call yourself, has sat down with the master teacher. If not him, some other master teacher of the more that that has Ella Bay on their name. And they didn't change tune. You sit down with a Sister Rosmariah V. Bay, and she breaks down to you what a more is. And you don't change tune. You sit at a debate watching Aleem kick Seti's ass intellectually. Kicked his ass. And because Aleem didn't get as big as applause as Seti, we're not going to nationalize. When actually and factually, Aleem kicked his ass, you're not going to naturalize it. You, you're just going to, it doesn't matter what you call yourself, and just go back out there continue paying taxes to the devil. I mean, if you're going to call it out, it's okay, so you're going to pay taxes to the devil, you're going to pay tickets to the devil when you're God, when you're calling yourself God and all that. How are you telling me that you're a nation of gods and earths, and you have your earth paying taxes to the devil? Thing. Let's go Google Marcus Garvey's speeches because I mm, that I read that. Forget it. So it's getting down to wind down time. Right. After the 16th century, this is for all you, um, this is for all you, don't worry, you'll, you'll see. After the 16th century, the Polish army exerted far-reaching influence on the development of Western armies, and it was an important channel for the transfer of Ottoman Tartar military expertise in Europe. It, it was King Stefan Battery of Hungarian Transylvanian origin, 1576 to 1586, who was responsible for the wave of Oriental influences that swept over Poland and Lithuania. At that time, the process of Ottomanization in Hungary and Transylvania had already settled profoundly. Therefore, as a result of contact between these states and the Ottoman Empire, a passion for things and concepts with an Islamic touch spread throughout the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth. All right? So... Even Jimi Hendrix knew about Moors and Moorish history. If he's dressing up like the Ottomans, who influenced Poland and Transylvania, even Jimi Hendrix knew about the Moors. If he's dressing He's dressing on Mr. Jimi Hendrix. You know, because everybody has this thing about nobody has to say that they're Moors. They're giving you keys. If you study, you would pick up on the keys. If you don't study, you'd be a dumb Negro talking about your conscious, but you have license in your pocket from the devil. Oh yeah, and then remember, you know, Prince came out. Remember Prince came out, started talking about, you know, conspiracy, Illuminati, and whatever, and all this type of stuff, and dressing just like Jimi Hendrix. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Now, 
we're going to look at this one and we're going to say, oh, sell out. You know, you can hear them already. They got the Fez on, working with the European. But no, this is how you know the morals. See the pantaloon? The soldier. But he has on pantaloon. When you compare it to these ones, that got the shorts and stuff like that, you know, got the skinny jeans. Right? See the ones with the skinny jeans? Skinny shorts? Right? Barefoot, stuff like that. This is an Algerian soldier with the fez on. So hold on a second. So Algeria is Moorish land. This is an Algerian. It doesn't look like no pale Arab that they show you with Algerian or whatever. And then he has on the pantaloon. And he's a soldier though. But he has the fez on. But I mean, he's not, he's not working for no British, anything French, nothing like that. This is Algerian. But their military got Fez on too. So that should let you know something. That should let you know something. And if it doesn't let you know something, then it means that you're incompetent. You should probably go study. And stop listening to these stupid people on their little channels or whatever talking crap to you about they know something they know goddamn thing you're gonna google an article by Charles G. B. Bacon Charles G. B. Bacon you'll know the feds this iconic hat is seen countless times across popular culture. It's instantly recognizable. Part of a stereotype, but what's the history of the Fed? The story goes that long ago, in the city of Fez, Morocco, the inhabitants, Andalusian Arabs, Make sure you Google them. You've never heard that term before. Andalusian Arab. <laughs> Started to make a red conical hat. It, its popularity spread across North Africa. Other sources state that it originated in ancient Greece and continued to be worn by medieval Byzantine Greeks. Maybe it originated simultaneously in both places. We might never know. Because remember, the Greeks' origin come from the Etruscans, who were dark-skinned people, not the people that we see today in Greece. So don't be fooled because they said Greece. So now, well... If the feds comes from Greece, then that means the black conscious guys are right that the European... Mm. Sorry. Go look up Etruscan. And you tell me if those look like some Greek or some African people. Stop playing. In any case, the Ottoman Turks, not the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, because Turks are really Moors. The Ottomans are Moors. And then both of them are synonymous to identify Moors. And then when Turkey came on the scene, everybody eliminated Ottoman Turks and focused on these pale people and say that, you know, those are the guys that originated the Fed. No, telling you again, the black conscious clown the biggest, greatest race traders in Moorish American history. The black conscious people playing out of your own stuff. Have you paying taxes to the devil? Have you paying taxes to the devil? 
have you with the devil's license, devil's social security, whatever, devil's bank account. Selling you out. So Charles G. Bacon. And we already know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Big up to Austin Powers for telling you, there's Mustafa from Austin Powers movie, played by Will Farrell. Farrell, you know, Far L, Will Far L, and then they got him to be Mustafa, who was the guy in Austin Powers that had the fez on, the only guy. Why did they get Will Far L? Of all actors out there, of all actors, they get the guy with L at the end of his name to play the part of Mustafa, who's one of the evil geniuses, but he wears a fez. You think they're just they're just doing that just because they they're making a movie? Why they get the guy with the last name Far L? Why? Why they get the guy? Think, just think about it. The guy with the name L on the back of his name is the one that they have in the movie wearing the fez. Playing these people. Playing them. Everybody got some colonization. Here's the... Filipino, working with the British or whatever like that. And you know because of the pantaloons, if they don't got pantaloons on, if they got the skinny jeans, you know that they're working with the Europeans. Compared to these ones, compared to these ones, right, who are the indigenous warriors, in the Philippines, known as the Moros, the Muslim warriors in the Philippines called the Moros. This is how they dress for war. No pantaloons, or I mean no skinny jeans, pantaloons, turban, head wraps. All right, once again, skinny jeans. You know they work for the European. Drop the fez on them. Have the people fare their, fare their own stuff. Right? Skinny jeans. Working with the European. Kill their own people. Even in the Philippines. So this is not something that's secluded to the continent. This is a pattern. This is a pattern. Drop the fez on them so people could think that, you know, taking their own. They got fences up though. Scare their people. Guess who these guys are? Muslim rebels of the Philippines. <laughs> Muslim rebels, really? Muslim rebels, right? You know who Muslims are. Muslims are Moors. You already know, right? What the hell? What the hell?
right? Exclusive. Exclusive. Meet America's first Muslim. It's a real scream by Paul L. William, June 10th, 2009. Islam is that old time religion. Timothy Drew, AKA Noble Drew Ali. In his speech before the University of Cairo, President Barack Obama said that Islam has always been part of America's story, adding that Muslims have enriched the United States since its time of its founding. Mr. Obama's statement raised the question that fellow historians, let alone elected officials, have raised in the past. Who was the first American Muslim? Some maintain that this forgotten figure was a Moorish slave who was transported to South Carolina in 1587. This is problematic since not one scintilla of historical evidence can be used to support this assertion. assertion. Historical evidence, however, does exist to show that Ayubia Suleiman Diallo and Omar Ibn Said were transported to the New World as slaves in 1731, but this evidence also shows that these slaves were returned to Africa in 1734. A few Muslim writers maintain that America's first Muslim was a Native American named Mohammed. The basis of this claim is that the name Muhammad bears a resemblance to the name of the Prophet of Allah. The same argument, of course, could be employed to establish that Muhammad was a Mahican or a Mayana, M-A-H-A-Y-A-N-A. If Muhammad doesn't qualify, others argue the title must belong to Peter Salem, a former slave who fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill. This noble figure, we are told, must have been a Muslim since Salem bears an etymological resemblance to Salam, the Arabic word for peace. Such arguments can be used more convincingly to contend that this stalwart figure's home was Salem, Massachusetts. When all attempts failed to produce one believing Muslim who lived in colonial America, Islamic revolutionists turned to the legend of the story of Old Tom, a 19th century slave on a Georgia plantation who purportedly proclaimed on his deathbed, Allah is God mm -hmm. and Muhammad is his prophet. Of course, there isn't documentation to show that old Tom the Mohammedan ever lived, let alone other shahada being giving up the ghost. Who was the first Muslim? Introducing Timothy Drew. Islam did not arrive in the new world with a boatload of black slaves or Muslim missionaries. It did not emerge from the cotton fields or the halls of ivy. Islam made its first appearance in the form of Timothy Drew, an African-American con man, a two-bit snake oil salesman who popped up on the street corner in Newark, New Jersey in 1910 as the savior prophet of Allah. Timothy Drew is not a subject of Black History Month. He has not been a subject of a PBS documentary nor that of a critical bi biography. Most historical professors, even at prestigious black universities, know little about him, but few African-American leaders have cast a larger shadow. Without Drew, there would be no black leaders, such as Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, Mukasa Dada, Stokely Carmichael, H. Rapp Brown, or Louis Farrakhan. No organizations such as Black Power Movement the non-student, non-violent coordinating committee, the Death Angels, or the New Black Panthers, no rap and hip-hop artists such as Public Enemy, Ice Cube, KRS-One, X-Clan, or Lauren Hill, and no Barack Hussein Obama. In 1913, Timothy Drew, known as Nobu Drew Ali, managed to convince hundreds of Newark Negroes that they were not descendants of African slaves, but sons and daughters of Moors. The very Moors who had introduced slavery to the Ivory Coast. In 1913, he opened what is reportedly the first mosque in America, the Holy Moabite Temple of the Science of the World, also known as Canaanite Temple. 
The Moors were living up and down the Mississippi River before the European came to them, Juali told his flock. The bananas were large and grapes were four in the hand. It took two men with hand sticks to carry a bunch of grapes. No one within the Moorish science movement came to realize that the Prophet Muhammad viewed the black race with contempt and referred to Negroes as raisin heads several times in the Hadith. 1662 9256. Girdles and snake oil. A male member of the temple were required to wear an official red fez available for $3. A girdle priced at $5 and a robe at the cost of $5. Women were obliged to cover their hair at all public gatherings and to augment their headpieces with a blue and oval Moorish pin sold for $3. All members were encouraged to add Bayer L to their names in order to signify their Moorish descent on their membership cards, renewable yearly for $1. The reception of such membership cards, Drew told his flock, represented relinquishment of their U.S. citizenship. Being born here doesn't make you a citizen, Drew told his disciples. This claim resulted in the refusal of many temple members to comply with the Selective Service Act of 1917. The new American Muslims were obligated, were obliged to attend Friday services and make payment of monthly dues of $2 for men and $1 for women. They were encouraged to purchase Noble Jewali's magical elixirs, Old Moorish Healing Oil, Moorish Blood Purifier comp Bath Compound, and Moorish herbal tea for human ailments for a nominal fee. My remedies, Drolly proclaimed, will cure you of anything you weren't born with. Read more. FamilySecurityMatters.org So there we have it. We do hope you will that the people receive the message that the greatest sellouts are the actual Negroes, blacks, colored people, Africans that claim that they're conscious, they're conscious, they wear dashikis and they put on this front like they have knowledge of self when really they're stateless people, non descendable have no ounce of honor or respect for their ancestors who were never slaves to anybody. We do will that the people recognize that there was an individual acknowledged as being a prophet and he brought your nationality and your birthrights back to you so that you can proclaim that nationality and declare that nationality to keep you from being victim to European colonization. We will that the people would consider just for a moment that maybe the Moors are right because if being a Moor is going to get me arrested and there's so many more locked up in jail according to Imam Bashir and all these other you know Seti and all these other people who you know have a problem with Moorish nationality there shouldn't be so many Moors out here still pushing people to be more if being a Moor is going to get you arrested I mean it's not even logical if there's so many Moors arrested, if all these Moors are locked up because they stood up and said they're national, why are there still so many Moors not arrested, still saying that they're Moors? We will that the people would consider that if somebody's telling me, don't be a Moor, because I might get arrested 
more than likely that's a house nigger that's working with the slave master trying to keep me in slavery because if the objective is free and be free then they should be employing me to follow Harriet Tubman they should be making sure that my bags are packed and I'm ready to go when Harriet Tubman comes and does the secret knock or flashes the light from the bushes or whatever like that and says come on let's go if not it's all good you'll be learning at the point of a sword we want to say Islam to all the Moors out there all the active Moors thank you for everything that you do continue to do that monumentous work that is needed because as you see, these people are going, you know, hard to try to keep their people as black, as non-descendable, as stateless as possible. And if the people choose to be that, that's cool. But we suggest that you don't take anything that anybody's saying for face value. Go out there, do your own research. And don't only do your research online. Go to a library. Go to the librarian and ask the librarian, Hi, librarian, could you show me the Moorish section of your library? And look at her, look at you funny, that you're asking for that particular section. And she might ask you again, Huh? Pardon? Where do you say it? And then don't look at it as a threat. You know what I mean? Say it again with confidence. I want to see the Moorish section of your library and watch her get up, walk you to a section, and show you the section of all the history of yourself that you never considered to even pay attention to. Why? Because some black conscious leader told you, don't study anything from the Moors, because all the Moors do is get you arrested, which are words of a house Negro. And not only go to the library, all these people out here walking around that you, you know, think is your enemy, kindly go to them and ask them, have you ever heard of the Moors? And see what they tell you. Don't, don't ask the black guys. Don't go to them. Go to, as Brother Taj calls them, the civilized people of the world. The people who don't call themselves yellow people and brown people, purple people, paisley print people. The people who do not call themselves it or adjectives. People who identify themselves by national names, go to them, ask them, have they heard about the Moors? Ask them, hey, what is your nationality? See what they tell you. I bet you they won't tell you that they're yellow people. I bet you they won't tell you that I'm Asian, I'm European, and claim that they come from continents. They are going to definitely tie themselves to a country. And when they tie themselves to a country, ask yourself, how come you don't have one? How come you don't have a nationality? So Islam to all the Moors, once again, give thanks for all the solar return blessings, blessings, and words of encouragement. We're going to keep this moving. You know, they're not stopping this. You know that those clowns are going to come again with something else. So all Moors, Hands on deck, because everybody needs to rebut these clowns. Whether you do it in writing, video, or whatever like that, put your story on the record, put your testimony on the record, so that the people can, you know what I mean, get down with their birthright. And I know people had questions. Don't worry, we got Sunday class. Same, more time. Same more channel, actually different more time. It's going to be at 1 o'clock. 
on Sunday, right here, one o'clock Sunday, right here, you stream, right? Also, KhalifaMedia.com, RVBayPublications.com, as well, for all our people who are looking to um, learn a little bit more, right? Don't forget, blogtalkradio.com, M-H-H-S, dash, eyes wide open. But this is how Moors do. We don't just do some two-hour thing and then we go eat food for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? We study. So right after this, you're going to go to get your blog talk juice, food, whatever you want to call it, knowledge of self, whatever. BlogTalkRadio.com, MHHS, eyes wide open, phone number 347-945-5899, 347-945-5899, Islam, let's just close out with the prayer, anybody who doesn't want to get down with the prayer yet, because I saw some new people, hold your peace, recognize that when Mars do this, right, this is our stuff. So when you hear Imam Bashir, I didn't see no Moors in Spain do this. This wasn't around during Moors in Spain. This is new Moors stuff. Right? This is Moors under Nobu Juali stuff. So they're not going to find this in Spain. They're not going to find this in anywhere else where Moors are at other than 1913 moving forward. Five on the left, two on the right. Allah the Father of the Universe, Father of Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day through his holy prophet, Nobu Juali. Islam, Ashe, black leaders must fall because they're down with Rome. Islam. <laughs>